In this video, Dakota and I are interviewing Brett and Jenna from a very large 2,300-acre drylands ranch in central Alberta. Brett and Jenna took the DIY design program to help get a grasp on how to manage this massive farm. 2,300 acres is a lot of land. Uh, as well as how to create a plan for succession. Now, as a result of running through the process, the DIY land design process, they found all sorts of new opportunities to store water and drought proof their property, um, how to create better reticulation, how to plan fencing, um, and also how to create an ongoing monitoring and management plan so that the tasks don't become too overwhelming and they've got a place to record them that uh, everybody on the farm actually has access to. So I encourage you guys to take a look at their story. Um, I think you'll find it really inspiring, especially if you're finding yourself on a really large farm trying to manage a lot of complexity, um, succession, uh, specifically succession within the family, uh, and trying to find new tools to uh, plan projects and make sure that the projects that need to happen have a way of being prioritized uh, in a way that doesn't end up overwhelming everybody. If you find this useful, uh, you might find the DIY land design uh, program uh, interesting to you. Um, I'll put a, sh a link to the show uh, in the show notes below that you can go and check out. Um, and on there you'll find our free two-hour e-course which will give you a ton of information about how you can do this for yourself. And if you're interested in having the Fast Track program, um, there's also two Fast Track options where we offer a one-on-one -on -one service as well as a group facilitated consulting process uh, where we'll help you walk through these steps over 12 weeks and get you to the same place as Brett and Jenna. Okay, thanks so much guys. Leave your comments below. If you like this, hit the like button and make sure you subscribe to our channel. So we're here with uh, Brett and Jenna and uh, we'd just like to hear a bit about your guys' property and, and your experience with the, with the course. So why don't you start off by introducing yourselves and where you farm and what you do. Definitely. Yeah, Jenna, take it away. You can. Well, I'm Jenna and this is Brett. <laughs> and uh, we farm uh, by Hellkirk, Alberta. So that's just east of Stetler. And it's a fifth generation family farm. So um, it's and it's always been passed down through the females, which is kind of cool. And um, it's uh, we run a cow calf operation, um, a commercial herd right now. Um, and my parents took holistic management about 10 years ago, so they transitioned out of grain then. And so we're just kind of um, stepping up with the grazing and the... Yeah, the focus of the health of the yeah. land. Yeah, exactly. Land and animals, so... Yeah, yeah, we live in uh, predominantly grassland as well as... Um, we're, we're right on the edge, um, just south of the Battle River, so we live in a pretty interesting area. And uh, we have our, to our 20 acres of transition to the farm, like Jenna said, basically back to a grass-based operation altogether. So we have a huge focus on grazing and, uh, and, the, and the glass. So, yeah. Awesome. Sounds incredible. So, you know, coming into this program, guys, what was your biggest struggle, concern, or, you know, emotion, essentially? What, were, what was the big kind of problem that you were trying to deal with? Um, and what were you hoping to achieve as a result of spending all this time and energy, um, you know, designing out your property? Good yeah, that's a really good question. I think, um, I think I'd answer that by saying that, um, um, we're both been interested in permaculture for a few years now, and, um, we've just been struggling with how to implement that on a larger scale, taking some of those, some of the 12 practices of permaculture and, um, and expanding that to what we do. So, few of the things that we learned in the course are like water conservation, how, how huge that is. Like the water above ground that you see is important, but every little bit that goes into the ground is just as important. Um, yeah. So just working with nature instead of against nature, um, as well as the water, water was a concern going into it for you guys. Oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Considering last summer we had uh, a pretty severe drought situation out here. Um, sure dried up so it really makes you um, try to be cognizant of, of um, storing water for late in the season when it gets hot and dry like that uh, your animals our animals definitely drink a lot of water and uh, 
yeah, it's needed for everything around here, garden, trees, everything. So, right. Jen, how about you? What was, what was the, your kind of primary um, struggle or concern prior to, to taking the course? Hmm. Um, well, lots to do with what Brett said, but um, um, it also, it was interesting because we did take holistic management uh, before this. So we kind of had that background okay. and um, it was interesting. We took that with my parents, but then taking this, apart from mom and dad to have our own um, set of ideas, I guess, and kind of uh, move forward um, with those ideas a little bit more, I guess. But uh, yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, the just, communication though. Yeah, well. like, I guess it's not, huge, it's, so. it was the regenerative farming practices, but also so much to do with our relationship with um, our parents and, or my parents and uh, just keeping that, family connection, but also a really good working environment. And I think that the course really did so much for us in that way. It's amazing. I'm curious as, as farmers, as grass farmers uh, who have already engaged in HM, whether or not uh, having the kind of geospatial context, so the mapping essentially, and the process tied in with HM, whether that kind of was a paradigm shift. Man, the maps took it to a whole nother level, that's for sure. Um, as far as planning our grass goes and our grazing planning goes, maps are essential at this point. I mean, um, we've, had, we've had maps from, from our county before, but having the elevation and um, contour lines has just really changed the way that we're, we're planning and mapping. And, and um, yeah, so going forward, they're gonna be a huge tool for us. Yeah, because on a small scale, we can get into the details so much more, but on a large scale too, just even, because we have a large, large lease and it does get overwhelming, but when you can use the Google Earth to write little notes or keep track of things, it just really sorts things out in your head and it's a wonderful tool, yeah. So kind of coming through all of this has really helped to bring the level of overwhelm down. How, like out of, a, out of a, a range of 10, 10 being it's completely eliminated it, one being it's done nothing. How much has this reduced the overwhelm for you? A lot, a lot yeah. yeah. Seven, seven, eight, <laughs> yeah. nine and some I mean, things. It's still, I mean, we're it's still it. in the whirlwind a little bit, but we're coming yeah. out on the other side. We have good goals and whatnot that we're working with. So yes, it's been huge. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Um, yeah, so why don't you guys uh, pull up the Google Earth and, and uh, give us a bit of a tour of, of your guys' operation and some of the design work that you've done. Yeah. Okay, I'll share, share the screen here with you. Perfect. How does that look? Perfect. Like an awesome operation. Okay, perfect. This is our home quarter section, you guys. So um, everything that we do with... How much, how much land do you guys have? We have about 2,750 acres um, that's owned by Tony and Clara, and Jenna and I are slowly trying to acquire some land. Um, it's difficult with, with land prices being the way that it is. And then we have access to another few hundred acres of, of rented land, uh, predominantly for pasture and for uh, residual grazing into the fall and early winter. So I can just kind of give you an overview of that here. Do you remember where that is? Can you see an access option? Let me just turn access on. Right, okay. Yeah. So our home quarter is based out of here. That's kind of the, the home base for the operation. And then, as you can see, we're spread out a little bit with, with land a little bit further to our south. Uh, this is quite productive land. And then we're, uh, we're really blessed to have some native prairie grassland up here that uh, preserve, uh, preserves its nutrients really good into the winter seasons and uh, the cattle do really well on it. Um, in the future, just to mention, um, Jenna's brother has a dream of coming back and uh, starting a goat and lavender operation out there. So yeah. I think he could be quite successful out there and he'd, he'd really uh, uh, do well with the permaculture course. So uh, yeah, so this is the home base for the operation. And um, yeah, the coolest thing about this course, in my opinion, has been our maps that uh, that we got. These LiDAR overlay images are super nice, really well laid out. Um, the guy that Dakota gets these from just does an excellent job of putting everything together. 
Um, but it just is such a game changer when we're talking about looking at water on our property. Um, so when we're looking at our home quarter, just from here, um, we're, we're not our, our, our weakest link definitely is not water on our home quarter, but uh, we're always want to be aware um, of storing as much on our land as we can. And we know that water runs through our property, but we just didn't grasp how much until yeah. I always thought it was kind of a flat piece of land, really. Like when you look out at it, your eye doesn't see all these things. So it just was life changing to see what it actually is. Even though I grew up on this piece of land my whole life and it's just changed everything. <laughs> so it's really, really great. Yeah, definitely. And it's just, yeah, so much fun to look, look through everything. Um, then from a permaculture standpoint, when you start looking at some, uh, you know, smaller areas like our yard. I really think that one of the nice tools that Dakota's laid out for us is the uh, the zone thing that I brought up earlier here. Um, and you can just really get a sense of, you know, where to where to build things and what to what uh, what needs to be where, right? Straight right from your zone zero to one, two, three, four, um, and where 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 to lay everything out. So the mapping is just so much fun. Playing around with ideas of if I put something here, what happens over here? What's it? What what is that going to affect? And mm -hmm. things like that. So yeah, because you can just post ideas and then yeah, that's right. Different yeah. Layers and it's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. <clears throat> one of the one of the things that I hear all the time is that you know permaculture doesn't work on the broad acre, and uh, you know it's it's only for you know small kind of urban type systems. And you know, I obviously have my own thoughts about that, but I'd like to get your guys' take on it after having come through this program and, and having a, a lot more land than, than, than we have on our family farm. What's your take on it? Is, is permaculture useful on the broad acre? Yes. Definitely, yeah. yes. It's, yeah, and I, I always had that concern too going into it. Um, I thought I'd be more over thinking about, oh my gosh, I have to do all these things with all this land, but it's really a it's a tool to just do what you can and to decide what's important and um, work from there. And it's been, yeah, it's definitely it's applicable to yeah. a large piece of land. Yeah, absolutely. Before and after, like before the course, I didn't, I, I kind of struggled with, with the same thoughts, like how are we going <laughs> to implement this onto a large scale? But yeah, the, the practices are very apl applicable to a larger scale. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Wow. Um, so I'm curious, who do you think would benefit from this program, guys? Ooh, well, I think anybody could do, anybody can can uh, benefit from a holistic management. So the tools in the course that are based on holistic management, uh, anybody who wants to, you know, simplify their life, life, I guess, could could benefit from that. And, yeah, it's not even just people who own land; it's people who could. Um, um, making decisions about which direction they want their life to go, but then the whole um, permaculture with the with the land values. That's so. I, I think it on any scale, if you have a small piece of land or a large piece of land, yeah, really, ranchers as well. Yeah, like exactly. From, from the permaculture standpoint, again, you know, rancher farmers and ranchers could benefit from from these practices tenfold. I mean. It's just simple little tools that could be applied to anybody's operation. Um, that just it, it's just something that to get you excited, you know, and and it makes you aware of what's going on all around you, right? And uh, so yeah, anybody really. <laughs> and it's uh, funny the the ideas that people have around the word permaculture, the word holistic management, but and uh, I, I wasn't too sure of it either. But uh, after going through it, it's just it's. Um, I don't know how to explain it. It's it's nothing like hippy dippy or anything. It's just right to the basics. It's really good stuff. So yeah. I mean, Dakota didn't make you guys hold hands and sing songs. No. <laughs> oh, oh, almost. There was a Kool Aid drink to be passed around. We opted out. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody in my class has to sing songs and hold hands. So. Oh, oh cool. <laughs> That's the next step. <laughs> So what I'm hearing is, is it's, it's given you guys some clarity. It's, it's created some insights on your property in terms of the mapping and water flows. Um, you know, what are you most excited about as a result of going through this uh, in, the next, in the next five years? Hmm. There's a couple. Yeah, things, there's, yeah. A, there's quite a few things. Uh, yeah. Go, go ahead. Well, the relationship with Jenna's parents, I think, has been one of the, one of the most uh, uh, 
you know, clarifying things through this all. Like we've learned so many tools to go to, to uh, just respect what they've done and, um, you know, not just dwell on the things that we think should be done differently, but really um, look at the positive things that, that Tony and Claire have done and, and uh, the generations before us. And uh, then the other one's probably the water storage. Yeah, <laughs> and water storage is definitely something we're very excited about. And along with that comes our grazing planning. So where fences and where trees will go and just how to make that so much easier working with nature. And um, yeah, so we can make that really easy and simple. Yeah. So that we want to do that. Yeah. Would, you, would you mind showing us some of the, the design work that you've got planned and some of the ideas that you're testing right now? Definitely. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Let's bring up, um, I just really love this tool. Like we said before, for, um, storing ideas, like, um, our, I'll just kind of show you where our standing water on our home quarter section is. And, uh, going forward, there's so much more work I can't wait to do into this is, is one thing I'd like to do is figure out how much water storage in, in gallons we have on the home quarter section and then see going forward how much more we can have. So I like turning on our contour lines for this because it really um, kind, of, kind of shows some interesting things, I think. Um, so underwater here, we've got our standing water, and, um, and then in this section, we just kind of put ideas in, and this is where it gets kind of fun, right? Like when you start looking at the contour lines and thinking about, I like the concept of a dam where you're, moving one one shovel full and building like you're getting kind of a two for one deal on your mm -hmm. on your equipment essentially as opposed to just digging out a dugout so yeah, the dam idea definitely has been, yeah paradigm shift yeah that's because definitely. we were always about digging dugouts and just uh yeah uh yeah never even well we've thought about it before but yeah just that was huge so yeah so just a few different places to back up water on our property and and um you know why we need so much water up near where we live is because that's our zone one zone zero mm -hmm. that's where our gardens are and so we need more water up there it's just kind of a realization of ours right and uh then just easy places small pinch points where where you can collect more water and like dakota said i think he's put hundreds of hours into looking at his property and uh still finds places that you can store water and i guarantee like in this 160 acre plot, we'll, we'll always, there will always be a new place that, to store water and that's really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, one other feature we've been using on this is, um, um, we kind of have a high traffic area over here um, in our Corel systems. This is something that we'd like to get away from in the future, but um, for now, um, we're kind of burdened with, um, you know, traveling over these areas quite a lot. These are high traffic areas that, that the tractor goes through and, and it, it kind of hammers out low spots. So um, in the springtime when, when runoff path, you know, we can see all these low spots that just collect mud. So you just put little notes on here um, and you can just click on these spots. You know, this is just a low spot by our calf pen. Just remember to laser level, I want to build that up. So it's not a low spot and get that drain properly and things like that. That's just been a really nice tool. Um, so you just kind of put everything in here, little notes and, and everything like that. Um, do you kind of want to show some of our well, the, our goals and things like that or the decision to make those testing uh, tools? Sure. We could. Yeah. What do you guys want to see next? <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. If, if you wouldn't mind, uh, if, if you found that was a, a good part of the course, go ahead and bring it up. Oh, I think it's up in the holistic. Yeah. Cool. This way you want to show? Um, well, the or, template for the decision testing. Oh, I yes. I don't think we have ours in here, but just this whole worksheet around decision testing, um, that's been huge. Um, just um, working through it and it makes it so easy, even though you're kind of feel overwhelmed as you're thinking about the different options, but just working through the sheet was just, it's great for anything big or little or yeah, big or small. And then uh, uh, working through the financials and all, all parts of the decision. So it's, a wonderful tool. Yeah, it's right here, right? Like on the maps, you wanna you yeah. wanna alter the landscape in some way. Well, let's test it, you know. So you just it's it's all right here. You just bring that up yeah. and, and you can test it right away. And so that's been a really really good tool as well. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. I, I just love seeing how um, everybody is is just filling these things up with information. It's I was saying to one of the other uh, students that. Um, 
you know, in the work that I do, I typically will deliver a big report, which is what people usually want. Um, they paid money to have me kind of compile it into one report, but this is such a great way of, uh, it's, it's nonlinear. Like there's just so many places to stick data. Uh, and because it's geospatially ref referenced, which is basically what a farm is, everything's geospatial on a farm. It makes sense not to have it stuck in a, you know, a hundred pages. It's, it should be distributed across the landscape where it makes sense from a, from a context perspective. So how much time did you guys spend on this? Like outside of class gonna time. Sandbag uh, yeah, outside of class. Jenna, I think you uh, said 10 hours before, 10. but I think it's... But it's hard because you think about it a lot, right? But actually sitting at the computer, like it was probably 10, 15 yeah. hours. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. is amazing how much you can get done because it was all set up here, ready for us to do it. And yeah. Rob, like you were saying, to have someone hand you a report, like if we paid someone to do that, that would be great. But... I'm not the type of person to sit down and read through a report. That's so right. to go through it myself and Brett and I worked through it together, that was a wonderful part of the process too, because we yeah. had to figure it out for ourselves and then we get really, really familiar with it. And yeah. Yeah. Could you, awesome. Would you guys mind flicking on some of the other layers, like the, the fencing and the structures? Because I know you guys did a lot of work there as well, just to kind of show people the depth that, that you've gone into here. Oh, well, how much time do you have? Because the fencing area is, is uh, definitely something that this is probably one of the biggest tools. And I'm glad you brought that up, Dakota. Because, um, yeah, for a ranch of our, like uh, an operation of our size, it's just um, so, so nice to have this, right? Because uh, just bring up our existing fencing. Maybe I'll throw that other one off for now. Um, so this is just the existing fencing on our home quarter section here. And then this applies just for for all of our land too, right? Like that's going forward, we're gonna sit down and, and put every fence on here because this is the best thing ever, right? Somebody sees a fence that's down, needs something repaired, um, you just boom, right away, um, put it on here, put it in red so we know, okay, this fence obviously is bad. Like what kind of priority is it? Click on it, figure out if it, if it needs to be fixed right away, when animals are going in there. That, that is just such a nice tool, so. Um, going forward, we're gonna we're gonna be doing a lot of this, and uh, then the other thing also is the proposed fencing ideas. Mm -hmm. So you can start looking at your property and thinking about your wetlands and your riparian areas and your and your tree health. And um, you know we we don't want our animals in here at certain times, so it's just it's it's easy. Let's propose to put a fence here, and what's that going to change? And and uh, you can just you can map everything out on here, before, and before you even do it, know what what everything, what it's yeah. going to affect. Right? Yeah, and how much fencing supplies you're going to need because you can measure it exactly and exactly. It just save so much time to take this extra little time to plan. And, yeah. yeah, Yeah, and the CAP program through the, through the Alberta government that's coming through right now too, right? They're going to need a lot of uh, information on your proposed fencing and what it's going to cost. And this is a super easy tool. You can say, I'm going to build, you know, a thousand feet of fence and how many posts you're going to need, how much wire you're going to need and just price it all out and, and it just makes it extremely simplified right yeah you know, so it's, it's a great tool awesome uh just kind of switching gears a bit here um the <clears throat> you guys had mentioned that that one of the the one of the benefits you've gotten out of the course is is the increased um uh an increase in the effectiveness of communication between yourselves and and uh tony and claire who are the who are kind of the elder agrarians in, in, um, in the operation there. Um, do you guys, going forward, what, what kind of a role do you see this, this tool and, and you know, the process that you've learned, um, what's, how is that going to affect the, the, the succession of your guys' operation? Well, I think it's, it's, it'll definitely improve it. Well, it's going to improve it so much. It already has, but just the fact that we have an organized structure to know what our, we want our plans to be rather than just running around trying to get stuff done. We can, um, we can basically tell mom and dad, this is what we want to do and why not just, um, you know, yeah, some the reasons instead of every little, idea we have coming coming to we just kind of bombard them with our issues and say i'm gonna fence this dugout off and these trees off you know well we come to them with a plan and say this is why i'm going to do this and this is what it's going to do and this is what it's going to cost yeah yeah 
and just learning how to ask better questions too, because they might not always be completely on board, but um, understanding where they're coming from and then learning as much as we can from them because uh, we're still the yeah. newbies coming in on this project. So, yeah. Well, one of, one of my hopes with, with um, this Google earth tool was to help to capture the, the story and the, the history of kind of the, the previous generation, all the work that they've done, you know, whether it's, you know, where they put buried utilities or, you know, right. where, the, where the metal larks and stuff, you know, come back every year, where they nest it to basically this, this would essentially become a, a storybook that can be passed mm -hmm. on from generation to generation. And um, to know, like in terms of, um, you know, it, it's already helping the, the current succession that you guys are going through, but um, what do you guys think it's going to look like in, you know, 30 years when you guys pass this off to your kids? Yeah. What, 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 what do you hope to, um, like, do you think, do you think you're going to continue to use this tool and, and um, on into your, your management and monitoring process? Definitely. Yes. And uh, I think it'll be just coming onto the land, like for Brett, who, didn't grow up here and doesn't know all the stories of what's been where. Um, and I can show an example of what I've been doing on here just to hold the history of the, where is it? In the floor, I think. I think so. Yeah, like so we, each paddock here, um, I hope to eventually have each year of what that was. And um, I hope to talk to mom and dad and figure out what the history was back to when they started, uh, what's been planted there, what's been on the soil, what's what it, what their their goals were, how much how many bales they got an acre or whatever, um, yeah. and have that all written in there, and then you can just click on it, see what it's produced, see if it's getting better or worse, and wow. having that as a monitoring <laughs> system, and then uh, but I couldn't imagine coming into this farm and then already having twenty years of history there. It would be incredible. So yeah. Um, well, well the, the one other thing I think we forgot to mention is that this home quarter section, we're, we're the fifth generation to be on this land. So this, this particular uh, quarter has been in, in Jenna's family for 112 years, yeah. somewhere around there. So um, could you imagine knowing, knowing for the last 112 years what was on there? Um, I think it's a really amazing tool. Um, to pass on to the next generation and say, here's what we did for the last 30 years and yeah. take it and that kind of thing. So that's, yeah, that's a really cool way to look at it. So cool. Incredible. Yeah, for sure. Wow. So it's definitely going to, to play an important role in, in the monitoring. I mean, you're, you're back casting, see what's going on, going on, and it's going to give you all sorts of information about forecasting. And, yes. uh, and then being able to test your assumptions essentially. So that's, that's amazing. Definitely. Really good. Mm -hmm. You guys have done such amazing work on this property. I, uh, I'm going to have to, I've got a big bucket list of farms. I have to come and visit now after all these interviews, you guys are oh, welcome anytime, Rob. Yeah. Yeah, yes, definitely. definitely. That'd be great. Awesome. Did you have any, anything else you wanted to add there, Dakota? I don't think, no, I think that's, that's great. Uh, again, you guys should be just super proud of the the work that you've done, and and uh, um, you know for making the commitment to to put in the hours because it's <clears throat> you know my I, I I'm confident that the best person to design your land is the person who's been on it the longest, and you know and this is just case in point. You know the, um, the you know how how much work that you guys have accomplished in you know only 10 or 15 hours in, in terms of computer work, there's a lot of, yeah. a lot of subconscious work that's going on in the background, but in talking with, with uh, Brittany, who also took the program with you guys, um, you know, she said she was probably over a hundred hours because she wow. didn't have those, um, those kind of all those observations and the experience of living on, on a piece of property for, you know, Jennifer, your whole life. And, and Brett, you've been there for what, five or six years now. Well, Jenna, I've been together for uh, eleven years. Eleven years, oh, but <laughs> but we've been back on the on the farm for just over two two years. Two years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, it's just it's amazing to see how how this this tool just pulls the stories and pulls the observations and pulls the experience out of out of people. Because the like 
everything that you guys need is is up in your heads. Like you have all the skills and everything else. It just you, it um, it's putting all the dots on a, onto a piece of paper so that you can make the connections. And oh yeah, like you know that's why we should bring the chi the, the kitchen garden over here. And this would be a great place of a dam because of this. And uh, yeah, it's just super inspiring. And uh, yeah, I I can't wait to come out and see you guys' property this summer. I'm sure you guys are going to yeah, be able to <clears throat> Cool. Well, thank you guys again so much for your time. And we'll, uh, do you guys have any last words that you'd like to say? Oh man, I should have thought, I should have thought about it, but yeah, it's just, um, the, the... Oh. kind of grow going forward. So it's, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, uh, yeah, it really has been life changing just to get all my, or all of our thoughts sorted out. It's just been so, so good. Exactly what we needed. And I don't think I would have waited any longer. It's just so glad I got to do this at this time too. Yeah. As we're just coming into the farm, it's perfect. Perfect. Thank you guys. Many land stewards feel overwhelmed with the complexity of designing and managing land in a way that is ecologically regenerative, financially sustainable, functionally resilient, and actually enjoyable. Dakota and I have consulted on many dozens of properties across Canada where we work one-on-one -on -one with landowners to provide them with the tools, resources, and support to design and manage the property of their dreams with the confidence of having an engineer and a farmer at their sides. Recently, the demand for our services has grown exponentially, but time, money, and distance often prevent us from being able to help. Our online DIY land design course is the solution. Built from our tried and tested five-step consulting process, this program will allow you to clarify your vision, values, and resources, diagnose your property for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, design the resilient property of your dreams, implement your design with the appropriate tools, resources, and support, and manage and monitor your property holistically so you can actually achieve your goals. The best person to design your property is you. Join us for this 12-week program. We guarantee our process will save you time, money, and the tears. Stop the grind and start growing the resilient property of your dreams. If you'd like to chat about this program to see if it's a fit, hit the request a callback button below. We hope to see you in the program real soon.